called the little voice, right? So, uh, what is the little voice? For those who don't know what it is. Well, the little voice is just the, just, is the thing in your head that just went, what little voice? That's, that's the one. The one, that's that, the one. the one that works overtime. And, um, and everybody's got it. You know, some people call it lots of different names for them. Self-talk, whatever it is. And so your little voice is just a composite of all your old experiences, your old habits, all that stuff. And uh, your brain just continues to work. You just don't shut it down. When you go to sleep, it doesn't even shut down. So, so it's constantly working, and, and so the challenge is to be able, as every personal development guru, every spiritual leader throughout mm -hmm. the last 5,000 years has said, is that you have, to con you, you have to control your thoughts in order to control your life. And so it's really not a new message, it's just that uh, what I try to do is to give people some simple tools to be able to a recognize that that lo that a lot of those the the self dialogue or little voice in your head is not cut in stone. You can choose it, um, and it will either go on autopilot based upon prior experiences, mm -hmm. or you can stop it and override it. For example, affirmations, nothing new. Affirmations, you know, we call them declarations, whatever you want to call them, is. Uh, are nothing new and, and the reason for an affirmation is because it's designed to override thoughts in your head about I'm not good enough I'm not smart enough I'm not fast enough whatever the case might be by saying I like myself I'm awesome I got this you know these are the things that you say so now what you're doing is you're now in a little bit of a battle bat, battling back this, the self-doubt the low confidence and all the negative experiences the problem because we grow up in a society as human beings is about everywhere in the world where we're, where we're simply taught to focus on what's wrong, what's not right, on your mistakes. You get, you, you hand in a paper at school, a test, and it comes back with red marks all over. Very few of those things say, good job, great, this is awesome. It's all the things you did wrong. So you're immediately taught to focus on what's wrong rather than what's right. I find it's interesting when you and I, when we go to Tanzania and we're working with those kids in the orphanage, they don't necessarily, even though they have nothing, they're happier kids. Would you agree? Much happier than happier. most of other kids in Yeah, they're schools. happy. They have these gigantic <laughs> smiles on their faces. All they want to do is hold your hand. They just want to play with you. They're just happy and they, because they don't go through all that condition. They have very little. And so their whole focus is on what is good because they need stuff that's good, because a lot around them is not good. So for them, every, their focus is on what is good, what can I do, how can I be, what, what can I become, as opposed to what did I do wrong, and why, what am I not allowed to do, what can't I do. And um, they're not in a competitive situation. You know, school is a type of a, of a situation where you're actually pitted against other kids. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So in other words, what happens is, is that you go, you go into school and your grades are based upon the other kids. So you're a mother, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You would never put your kid, you would never put your kid in mortal combat with another kid purposely, would you? No. But that's what we do. We put from an early age, they learn they must compete. They must compete in order to survive. And I'm saying that they got to get better and they got to calibrate against each other, but, but that whole thing, some kid's going to get an A, some kid's going to flunk. That's the, way, that's the way of the world. And the guys in the middle, you'll get middle, middle class jobs. And the guys at the top, hopefully you become a professional. But now that whole scenario has been turned upside down. It doesn't work anymore. So now you got a bunch of kids out there that are lost. You know, like Peter, you ever saw the movie Peter Pan, right? It's like the lost boys. That's what they are. They're lost kids out there. They're wandering around, following each other around, just like in Peter Pan, not knowing where to go and afraid to get out of their pajamas. Mm -hmm. Afraid to go out and face on the world because all the rules that we taught them don't apply anymore. Um, so I think that, um, I'm not sure what your original question was, but I, think that, but, I, but, I, but I think that the fact of the matter is that your little voice is so focused on what's negative and what's wrong that you have to take an active role in putting positive stuff back in there. Because the truth of it all, look around this place. And even, even at the orphanage in Tanzania, 
it's 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 a beautiful place yeah. and 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 to focus on what's working as opposed to what's not working and i think that that's the whole goal of, of the little voice is to give is it your, how you deal with your, your own little back. voice what's that is it how you deal with your own little voice yeah i mean i do i take the 711 approach to personal development you know, 7-Eleven, you go to 7-Eleven store, mm -hmm. they have a little bit of everything, so mm -hmm. I try everything. I try everything. And then, and then you just take what works. And I take what different. works. I try, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I got a session tomorrow that I'll be doing, you know, I, got, I go to Mac Newton every morning, he lectures me, and I work out like a demon with him. I've, I've been in programs where I've had copper kettles put on my head, I've had, you know, past life stuff, rebirthing, you know, put myself in fetal position. I've, I've done... And I continue to do all that stuff. L searching for, I guess what it is, is one of my great mentors, he's deceased now, but he was one of my great teachers, his name was Alan Walter, and mm -hmm. he said, he says, we have so many powers as human beings. And I guess for me, my whole goal is to get my power back. So I get my power back. That's why going to Kilimanjaro is so powerful, because as you, it, when you are really present for that period of time, Here's the formula. You, you, the more present you are, the more of you you have access to, right? Because mm -hmm. you're not distracted, right? So the more present you are, the more of you you get back. And the more of you you get back, the bigger you become as a being, right? And the bigger you become as a being, the more you attract into you. So, it's a, so what happens on Killy, the reason I keep going back, is it because I keep getting, I get more of my power back. My ability, my ability to perceive, my ability to be present, my ability to manifest, my ability to, tel to telepathically communicate. All these powers that we've had as human beings all start coming back and kicking in. So for me, the reason I do little voice work is to battle back the stuff that wants to make me small and focus on the things that want to make me big. Now, the stuff that makes me small is simply to make me is a, simply a, a protective mechanism to keep me from getting hurt. I know that, mm -hmm. but I but I'm older now. I'm smarter now. I'm stronger now. I don't need those mechanisms anymore. I don't know that I ever needed them, but I but I but for me, I just want my power back. I just I want to I just want to be able to access all of what I've been given and just see what that's like. Yeah, what are you going to do with that when you have it? I don't know. I don't even know. I don't, it, 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 doesn't even bo it doesn't even bother me. I just want to know. I just want, I just, I know how I feel when I feel big and it feels great. And I know how many people I can serve when I feel like that. And it's hundreds of thousands, maybe millions. And I know what holds me back. And I just want to eliminate those things so that I can put myself in the best position to be the best me that I can be. Uh, I always say that you came into the, I think we all came into this world as huge beings, mm -hmm. uh, into this body, anyway. I, mean, I don't know what happened before or after, or if, there, if there's a before or after, but all I know is I, I believe we come into these as huge beings, and, and I just wanna, I want, I wanna be that being. When we speak to someone, when we share a moment, even when we share our own thoughts, mm -hmm. we're constantly learning because we constantly become more enlightened to who we are and to what we're hearing and to what, we're, what, is, what surrounds us.